Today we're in Nashville at my dear friend Maureen's garden and this is a great example of what you can do with your lawn and to turn it into a fabulous garden full of flowers, perennials, and annuals, vegetables. It's totally just amazing. It's Halloween and thank you Maureen for inviting us out here. Glad to be here. You have made your lawn into a, such a beautiful place. No lawn left. <laughs> <laughs> no lawn left. Right. Well tell us about this plant. This is the native uh, passion fruit and passion flower. It has earlier in the season most gorgeous purple. The big purple flowers. Yep, purple flowers. And then these are the fruit, which I absolutely love. Um, you can buy a more commercial uh, type of passion fruit in, in supermarkets, but I really love these. I make uh, various desserts and just eat them out of hand. And another reason I grow these is because they're the only host plant for the Gulf Fritillary butterfly. And you can see there's a lot of chewing going on. Here's one of their little caterpillars, funny little kind of prickly thing. And it turns into a beautiful orange butterfly. You've got tomatoes still growing. Have you not had a frost yet? We've not had a frost and it's Halloween. We often <laughs> do by this time, but uh, I doubt we'll make it to Thanksgiving though. <laughs> Well, that's great though. You're still getting ripe tomatoes and yeah. you have, I see beans and okra, but all this is right. fall stuff through here. These are fall things, broccoli, cabbages, Brussels sprouts, uh, Savoy cabbage, cauliflower, plus lettuces and things in the backyard. Okay, well, we'll get mm -hmm. back there in a minute. I like ground covers. I've got two different kinds in here. The buckwheat is one I put in earlier and it is, as you said, wonderful for the soil. It will die at the frost, so on the buckwheat that's in the front of the yard, I have an undergrowth already of crimson clover coming up, which will take over and grow well into the winter. So this is a great way to, to be improving your soil while you're growing right. some crops. Exactly. Sometimes I mix it in. Uh, sometimes, like I said, I plant it under ones that I haven't taken out yet, but it really helps. And it's a beautiful plant. It's good for the soil and it, when it blooms, it is gorgeous. Oh, it has that big so, red bloom. Yeah, I love it. I love <laughs> yeah. it. And this is an interesting plant. That's a hyacinth bean, isn't it? Yes, a hyacinth bean that came up all on its own. That's a volunteer. <laughs> it's a volunteer. <laughs> yeah. I don't eat that, but I find it to be one of the really pretty plants. And it brings in insects and mm -hmm. pollinators. This is my, uh, eventually will be my herb spiral. I see, you have rosemary uh -huh. and some basils. Right. And this bed is a hugel culture bed. Oh, it has this wood This whole berry. thing, yes. So you see the hugel mm -hmm. culture is a process of burying wood, covering it with soil and growing on top of it, and then the wood eventually rots. It makes this big sponge-like thing exactly. that sucks in water. It really helps with not having to water too much, and it's yeah. been very nutritious. I've been, this is only the second year of this hugel culture. Last year we grew sweet potatoes out here, which was an incredible blanket along <laughs> with crimson clover, yeah. and we got 220 some pounds of sweet potatoes on oh, this front Oh my yard. goodness gracious, <laughs> so, this is a productive front yard. It lawn. is a very productive <laughs> front yard, and I, I, uh, my first experiment with hugel culture oh, definitely worked. My goodness worked. gracious, that's that uh, wine berry, yeah. isn't it? Is right. That that's kind of a mix of raspberry and some peppers peppers <laughs> tomatoes coming in and there's always a passion fruit or two in there as well <laughs> well i know you love them <laughs> right i do well this looks like datura which is a common weed up where i live but this is the <laughs> The, what, the angel of death or something? What is it? I, it might be called that, and I had no intention of planting it here. You didn't? <laughs> no. I thought I was planting eggplant. Eggplant? <laughs> well, the leaves do look a little like eggplant. They do, but I think it was misnamed seed. I don't know, but <laughs> I would never put it this close either because it's a very aggressive plant, takes yes. over the sidewalk. The sidewalk, I have to keep, yeah. I keep pruning it back. Oh, that, the, some of that porchalaca. Porchalaca, yeah. Yeah, that's an old-fashioned plant there. I know, I love it. My mom's favorite. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's a beauty. And you have herbs planted all the way to the curb. Yes, and I have a little sign that says for people to take what they want uh, because oh, I, so nice. this is a sharing sharing garden. I right. have all kinds of things, mints and mints, oregano. I see mint. mm -hmm. Oregano, garlic chives. Garlic chives right here. Yeah. Yep. Like they're beautiful. beautiful. Of course, my cow peas take over. Oh, they your come cow in peas. everywhere, yeah, right? Well, they're good for the soil wherever they go. They grow. are. Thyme. Thyme. Mm -hmm. Thyme there. Yep. Yes. More garlic chives. Is this a fennel of some Fennel, kind, yes. This is the bronze fennel. 
Well, this looks like a volunteer sun gold tomato. Boy, I love it these is. things. They're wonderful. Aren't they good. Where, where are you? Where's the soil? <laughs> There is none. This actually came up out of the concrete. Oh and my I goodness have, gracious. I have no idea how it is surviving. But and that is amazing. Yeah, well, it, it is. And we, you know, I, I just didn't have the heart to take it out. Well, you're using every available <laughs> every, space. Yes, I am. <laughs> concrete included. Well, tell us about these uh, pockets of strawberries. They, they are strawberries. I just put those in about uh, three weeks ago. And the pockets, as you call them, are my version of something called woolly pockets. I made them from large um, grow pots, I guess they are. You can yeah. buy made out of, I think, felt. Yeah, and those strawberries will then grow on down? They, they will, yes. I'll oh, probably okay. be cutting off the runners and put them, put them elsewhere. But hopefully we'll next spring have some strawberries. Yes, and these look like rain barrels. Rain barrels, yes. We have several in the yard. Uh, we use... I would say 90% rainwater oh, with what, because we collect quite a bit um, and it really helps with that. And yeah. it seems the plants like it better. I think the plants I, I don't know why that is exactly, but well, it's they just the way it was thrive. Made. <laughs> yes, that's right. They seem to thrive on it. That's so. great. Well, let's go on into the garden. Okay. Okay, well here we're walking through a muscadine arbor and we're coming across some delicious looking raspberries. You love raspberries here, don't I you? I do, and my grandkids love them too. This is the first place they go when they come to the yard. <laughs> I bet. These are heritage raspberry. They will produce um, right up until frost. Yeah. I only. have uh, tried other kinds, but I find the heritage seems That's to be the one That's one we grow at our place too, is we it? like yeah, it. Yeah, I like yeah. it a lot, yeah. so. And you just, uh, you make trellises out of just about anything, don't you? I do. <laughs> <laughs> this is old elderberry steaks. I read that they are territorial. The cabbage moth is, uh, is territorial. And so I, uh, they suggested making little decoys and putting them up so that they will flutter around. I don't think it's 100%, but no. I think it might have helped Certainly a little helped. bit. Yeah. yeah. And it looks like you're starting some more plants. Uh, that's right. Oh my goodness gracious. Did we you... have still so many sweet potatoes that once the sweet potatoes come out, I needed plants to uh, get in. So I have a lot of different things here. Broccolis, pak choy, lettuce, Swiss chard. Maureen, where are you gonna put your little seedlings? They will be going in this little hoop house that uh, once the sweet potatoes out, there will be room. There's also another uh, hoop house in the further back in the yard that they'll go. Okay, and so you'll cover this with plastic then? Yes. And mm -hmm. have some greens all winter long? That's right. All right. That's my hope. And here we have something flowering. What's this? Carrot. That's the old <laughs> carrot, isn't it? I love the look of them, and they're beautiful umbral, help bring in beneficial uh, insects, and I just let a few of them go to seed uh, that my grandkids haven't already pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this sweet potato bed, you have some other plants, but I recognize these. Those aren't weeds. Nope, those are daikon radish. Daikon radishes. Daikon radish. There's also some buckwheat. I sowed the two of those together underneath the sweet potato before it was quite as vigorous as this. Mm -hmm. But they got a good start, and once the sweet potato comes out, probably this weekend, they'll yeah. have room to really go. And you already have something planted. That's right. That's really That's cool. Right. Like most of Tennessee, Maureen's backyard is on a slope. It looks like you're dealing with terraces. In a sense, we are, and part of that happened because the ground was so rocky. Mm -hmm. We had to do something to get dirt in. We have composted a lot, but we did bring in dirt after we used the rocks to make these raised beds. Well, and yes, we did kind of terrace it. It helped uh, deal with the slope. Yep, it looks great. Thank you. In addition to your herb curb out front, I see you have some cilantro, fennel, and a few things right in here. Right, oregano, uh, different things that I really like well into the fall. Yeah. I planted a few other lettuces and oh, in there that is just starting up. to come up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully it'll make it before it gets hit too hard with the really cold weather. Yes. It can take some frost. Yeah. And then here is a beautiful, uh, unusual plant. Mm -hmm. Look at this. My goodness gracious, that is a Tennessee lemon. It, yes, it's also known as a flying dragon, mm -hmm. which is a very <laughs> colorful name. The fruit, it was really loaded. Most of them have dropped off by now. You open these up and they smell wonderful, first of all. Isn't that amazing? Oh, yeah. So this is the, <laughs> it is. the yuzu that they mm -hmm. uh, 
the chefs talk so much about being such a great aroma and flavor. I bet you didn't know we could grow citrus in Tennessee. <laughs> Look at that. Lots of seeds in there. Yeah, but still, that's fresh citrus yep. in Tennessee. Yep. I've goodness, made things fresh. like a key lime pie, or not with key limes, obviously, with this. With, with these? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I bet that makes a great pie. Well, we've been at the curb, and we've been through your garden, and now we're at the back alley, and what in the world do you have here? Well, I kept running out of room, so <laughs> I asked my husband to build me a bed back here, and we call it the sky bed. The sky bed. A lot of it is out of recycled wood that we found, mm -hmm. and then we lined it with the, the metal, and it's worked to, out to be a really very productive bed. And these sweet potatoes, they're all growing up there and coming yep. all the way down here, aren't they? That's right. They're uh, very enthusiastic. <laughs> Yes. There's other things up there. What else you have? There's uh, some Swiss chard, buckwheat, a few tomatoes. There's actually even still some regular potatoes in this end. Oh, really? <laughs> and so you I'll just get climb, them when I get the sweet potatoes. And you just climb up there and work up there. What's that? You climb up there oh, yeah. and work up yeah. there. Oh, yeah. With That's the grandkids. Amazing. They love, be, they love uh, especially they love getting sweet potatoes yeah, up well, here. I can see where it gets a lot of sun, a lot more sun up there than you would if it was on the ground. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I hear you get together with your neighbors and that you have influenced quite a bit of gardening in your neighborhood. Well, I, I like to think so. They've influenced me just as much. Uh, our goal is to have 2018 new square footage of, of new gardens this year and we're real close to meeting that goal and we have programs uh, like you said once a month uh, focusing on all sorts of different aspects of gardening we have learned a lot from you jeff you've been a wonderful support and source of knowledge thank you well thank you for having this great lawn turned into this great garden so it's been thank you. really wonderful to be here For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.